things that I appreciate most about my history is how much all things have worked together for good. I could not have planned or dreamed for the life that I now have, which makes me excited for my future. I haven't a clue where I'll be 35 years from now, but I'm confident that no matter where I am or what has happened, in the end, it will be good. I was born 36 years ago in small town Ohio to an unwed mother, which back then was a pretty darn big deal. For the first decade of my life, she was studying on and off to get her master's degree because she figured that if she was going to be the head of a one income household, then that, house, that income should be sufficient. The second decade of my childhood was spent watching her fight for the underdogs as a high school guidance counselor as she pushed back against principals and teachers who just wanted to brush kids aside who were the hardest to deal with. For all of my childhood, I was the only child of a single parent. I don't know my dad. I've seen him three times, but the last time I was 12, so I feel like none of that really counts for much of anything. But throughout my entire life, I had a firmly held belief that I wasn't rejected. You can't reject someone you don't know. He rejected his parental responsibilities. So thankfully, not knowing my dad has never been much of an issue in my life. Soon after college, I joined AmeriCorps, which is a domestic Peace Corps program. And during my years of service there, I started dating this guy named Sean. You know, just this casual thing that once AmeriCorps ended, we would go our separate ways. This year, we will be celebrating our 10-year wedding anniversary. <laughs> so clearly, I don't do casual very well. Uh -huh. <laughs> and in 2016, we adopted a ridiculously adorable and funny son, Leo, <coughs> who kept us up most of the night last night. So we still have some issues that we're working out. But loving children who are not related to me blood is also a big part of my occupation. Also, not knowing my dad, and watching my mom advocate for the most vulnerable kids greatly impacted my career choice. In college, I studied social work, and I am now the founder and director of a nonprofit called The Children's Home Project. And what we do is we work with children's homes and kids on the street in Honduras, and we bring education, mental health services, and positive mentoring relationships to our kids. The vast majority have lost at least one, if not both, parents. So the fact that I don't know my dad has actually come in handy on multiple occasions to build both rapport and trust with the kids as we're starting new relationships. And then also watching my mom push back against the school system for years and years of my life has made it seem like second nature for me to challenge society's norms, assumptions, attitudes towards the kids that I work with. And when I was growing up in Ohio, I had no thought that I would ever leave this small little town. So I still pinch myself sometimes when I think about the fact that my life is so firmly divided between living and working in this big city and then also living and working in another country entirely. But my physical location isn't the only thing that has changed greatly over the years. Now, when I was creating this speech, I used the Ford model, which is what we encourage for icebreakers, which is going over your family, your occupation, recreation, and dreams. But when I thought about recreation, they, it's changed so much throughout my life that there's nothing that really warrants any part of my four to six minute speech. So my R in forward is religion. I became a Christian when I was 15 years old, and I was part of a youth group that gave me a very beautiful childhood and insulated me from a lot of the pitfalls of adolescence. But it also is a very black and white, judgmental, and some have even called it a cultish environment. But when I was 18 years old, I prayed what was the most audacious and authentic prayer of my life. I wanted to become a missionary. This is a good prayer, right? It's going to be answered well, right? And I knew that within a couple months, I would be on the plane on my way to the great unknown. <coughs> I waited. And I prayed some more, and I waited some more, and I doubted, waited. And then finally, 10 years later, I was on that plane. But by that point, I was a very different person. Studying social work and meeting people that were outside of my bubble had really broken down a lot of my black and white views. 
And then the kids that I met while we were serving in Honduras are the kids that I now work with. And that planted the seeds of what became the Children's Home Project. But throughout the years, I have struggled mightily with my faith. I have raised my fist often and emphatically to God as I have met kids that I've loved that are struggling with things that I sometimes can't do anything about. And I have beat my head against the wall working with churches and Christians that are way more interested in whether or not a child has memorized a Bible verse than if that child is safe. After many years, this roller coaster of faith that I was sometimes afraid to go off the rails, I have now reached the pivotal point, and I am reclaiming Jesus. That's one of the most the things that I'm the most excited for in 2018. My dream is that I will no longer apologize for what I believe and how it affects my decisions. My dream is that I will be able to be filled with more compassion and forgiveness to the people that gave me a beautiful childhood but also discouraged me from asking questions or ever doubting. And my dream is that Sean, Leo, and I will continue creating in our little family love, empathy, compassion, and that we'll always be ready to help those in need. Thank you.